Excellent. Thank you. All right, so now it is recording. You know, even when it's recording, I still have to check because sometimes I forgot to switch the mic channel, so you'll be watching a silent movie, and other times the OBS will be recording the wrong screen, so it's not going to be what you're seeing here. But thank you for reminding me. So everything is good. I just checked. All right, so we are looking at a number of 45.625, okay? And that's a base 10 number, so unless I say something about a number, by default, it is in base 10. So first thing is, we're going to take a look at this number. So this is 4 times 10 to the power of 1 plus 5 times 10 to the power of 0 plus 6 times 10 to the power of negative 1 plus 2 times 10 to the power of negative 2 plus 5 times 10 to the power of negative 3. Um, can everybody read my handwriting, you know, including people all the way to the back? Okay, it's all legible. Okay, very good. <clears throat> so this is something that we talked about last time, you know, except I was typing it. I think this looks a little bit neater compared to what I typed last time. So what we observe here is each digit, 4, 5, 6, 2, and then 5 again, each of those digits is representing the quantity of a power of 10. That is how a number works, okay? All right, so I'm just gonna use a mouse pointer to emphasize what I just said. This is a digit, this is a digit, this is a digit, this is a digit, this is also a digit. So each one is representing the quantity, like how many, of a power of 10 do we have in the quantity, the overall quantity that we want to represent. In this case, we have 4 of 10 to the power of 1, and so on. I said that a little bit earlier already. So generally speaking, this is how numbers work regardless of the base. It can be base 2, can be base 10, can be a really awkward base like base 7, or base 4, or base 3. It doesn't matter, okay? What we are really changing in terms of the base is what? What do you think? Which part are we changing when we say, oh, we are not dealing with base 10 anymore, we're dealing with base 2. What are we going to change in the expression? Go ahead. Exactly. So the 10 would become a 2, you know, in all these cases if we are switching to base 2, okay? So now we want to introduce, you know, some terminology. In other words, Instead of saying this digit versus that digit and so on, which is awfully confusing, we're going to you know, call these digits. We'll have names assigned to the digits. This one here is special because this is digit zero. So I'm going to use D with a subscript of zero to describe digit zero. The reason why this one is special is it's kind of like a home so that I can you know, find other digits relative to the position of digit zero. Digit zero is also the one that is immediately to the left-hand side of what we call the decimal point, but I'm just going to call it the point, okay? Because decimal point implies that we are using decimal, which is base 10, but since you know, we're going to switch over to base two really soon in this class, so we'll just call it the point, okay? So this point here, Okay, the significance of this point is simple. It is simply a marker that is dividing between digit zero and digit negative one. That's the only purpose of quote unquote the point. Now, if somebody here is coming from Europe, okay, or you got your early education from Europe, you go like this and, no, we should be using a comma here. Yes, Europeans you know, tend to switch the rows of the comma and the point compared to what Americans you know, use. So, you know, but since we are in the US, okay, so the decimal point is the separator between digit zero and digit negative one. So this one here is simply digit negative one, and you can see how, you know, digit two, or digit one, sorry, digit one is here, and then this is digit negative two, and this is digit negative three, and so on. So I'm gonna pause and see if there are any questions regarding 
you know, how we call or how we name the individual digits in a number. Are we good so far? All right, okay. <clears throat> so do we have a digit negative four or a digit D2 in this number? Now, that is a trick question. So the answer is no and yes, okay? The answer no is they're not spelled out. The answer yes is they're all implied to be zeros. Very good, okay? So there's no limitation as to how many digits you know, are actually here. It's only that we, the, the only ones that are significant are D1, D0, D negative one, D negative two, and D negative three. But I can easily and say, oh, in this particular case, D of, I'm just picking a number here, 135 is a zero. It's not spelled out because it doesn't matter, okay? We just have an infinite number of zeros to the left of D1, and then we have an infinite number of zeros to the right of D of negative three. Is that okay? All right? So just because we don't see those digits does not mean that, quote unquote, they do not exist. They do exist, they just have a value of zero. It doesn't change the value that is being represented here. Are we still doing okay so far with this? All right. So if I want to find out what is the value represented by a number, then we can just say V, which is the value represented by a number, is I'm going to use the sigma notation. Um, I will go over the uh, definition first, and then we'll go back and see if there are any questions about the sigma notation. So I'm just going to range, you know, use I as an index you know, variable. It's going to go from negative infinity as an integer to positive in, uh, infinity as an integer. And all it is is D of I times whatever the base is, in this case base 10, to the power of I. Okay. In other words, instead of writing out okay, the way that we wrote out this you know, particular expression, I'm just going to be lazy and use a sigma notation and say, if you give me all the digits, or at least all the ones that are significant, I can tell you what is the value represented by that number. So I'm gonna pause here and see if there are any questions about what we have talked about so far. Yes, so it's di times 10 to the power of i. Sometimes, most of the time, I do not use a dot to represent multiplication. But you know, yes, it, is, it means multiplication. All right, so are we doing okay so far in the case of base 10? Going from a concrete example at the top of this particular slide to a general format that is a you know, sigma notation. Are there any questions about the sigma notation? Is everybody familiar with the sigma notation? Go ahead. Okay, so the sigma notation is basically indicating a loop, okay? So I can describe a sigma notation using um, a piece of C code, okay? So if I say, you know, sigma, I is going from B for beginning to E, which is the end, some kind of function applied to I, okay? That is basically the same thing, the same thing as a loop set up like this. So I'm gonna try to use a C syntax here, in this class, we're going to deal with mostly, I, I'm just going to use double, okay, because you know, that covers all the cases. So I'm going to use double, and we have a sum that is initialized to a zero, and then the loop is going like this, for int i, starting from b, i has to be less than or equal to e, which means when i equals to e, that is our last iteration through the loop, okay? So this is important. And then for each loop, we are going to increment i, and then inside the loop itself, s is gonna be increased by f of i. 
So this is basically doing the same as that. If variable s is the actual uh, the value of the sigma notation, then we can use the code on the right hand side to perform exactly the same operation. So does that help? Okay, excellent. Go ahead. So, uh, why is that? Is that the same power? Say again. No, no. F of i is just a, some kind of function that depends on i. I don't even care how you define f of i because you know, what, what this portion is trying to explain is what the sigma notation is. You can use the sigma notation for a whole lot of things. Using the sigma notation in this particular context to express the value of a number is just one of the many ways to make use of the sigma notation. So the focus is really just the sigma notation. F of i can be any function. Is that still okay? All right. Very good. Okay. So base 10 is not a whole lot of fun. We don't like base 10 because it makes a really large multiplication table. It does not readily convert to other bases, such as base 2, base 16, and so on. So we don't like base 10. We like base 2. So now the question is, how do we read a base 2 number? Okay. So this equation here, okay, this is an equation that is in the module that we are reading today. And let me point out where it is. <clears throat> When we talk about equations or formulae and stuff like that, you probably want to have a place in your notes you know, that, that is kind of dedicated to all the definitions, so it's easy to look up the definitions. All right? So yes, it is in my notes, and yes, you can, bring, you can print out all my notes and bring it to the exam. The question is, can you find the relevant definitions in time in order to finish the test? So if your answer is, well, maybe if I write it down in my own notes, I know where to find it more effectively, then you probably want to write it down. Maybe not now, maybe a little bit later. Remember, you have to spend, you're supposed to spend two hours for each hour of lecture in class to kind of study, review, read ahead of time, that sort of thing, okay? All right. So in this case, you go like, hmm, attack, you know, where's the 10? Well, the 10 is here, okay? This is your, for base 10. This one is for base B, whatever the B is. So if we want to deal with binary numbers, B is 2. If we, if we want to deal with base 10 number, B is 10. If we want to deal with hexadecimal numbers, B is 16. Very good. All right, excellent. Because hexadecimal means your know, hexa is 6. Deci is 10, 6 plus 10 is 16. All right, very cool. So now we're gonna do something that is in the opposite direction, okay? Because for the most part, what this is gonna do is to give us the value represented by a specific number in a specific base. So let's kind of go through one more example first you know, before we move on to the next example, which is, um, how do we convert bases, okay? What about base two numbers? All right, so I'm gonna give you an example, okay? We'll have a base two number. Now in base two, each digit can only be zero or one, very good, all right. So that means you know, if I'm working with a, a binary number, it can only consist of zeros and ones, okay? So we'll go ahead, so I'm just trying to do all this math in my head. Okay, we have one, one, I think it's one, zero, one. Let me think. One, no, one, zero, one, zero, one point. Oh my gosh, that was completely coincidental. Okay, so we're looking at a binary number that looks kind of funky. One, zero, one, zero, one point one, zero, one. It's a base two number. I want to find out what value it is representing. Yes? 
the squiggle under. Um, that's a two, which means it, which emphasizes this is a base two number. So if a number is followed by a subscript, that subscript is telling you, is emphasizing what base we are working with. So I would use this notation whenever I'm working with a non-base 10 number. With a base 10 number, the def which is the default, we'll just say that we don't need to indicate the base. So very good question. This is also a notational kind of thing because when you see this two, it means we are dealing with a base two number. That is the base. All right, so what, are we, what do we know here, okay? So the question is, how do we interpret these digits? Remember that equation, okay? I'm gonna spell the out equation here again. I is, so in this case, I don't wanna go for negative infinity because I know the uh, least significant digit is the one that is over here, you know, which is where the mouse point is pointing to right now. So what is that digit? Digit negative three, very good. Okay, this is digit negative three, which means instead of starting from negative infinity, we can now say, eh, let's just start with negative three. What about the most significant digit, which is this one over here? Which digit is that? Digit four, very good, okay. I'm glad that I did not hear digit five. It's digit four because zero is one of the non-negative numbers, okay? This is the same reason, or almost the same reason, why in uh, C and C++, indexing in an array starts with zero, not one. Very good, okay. So now we look at D of I, and this time we multiply by two to the power of I, because we're not dealing with base 10 anymore, this time we're dealing with base two. Is that making any sense so far? So now we, we're just gonna expand the sigma notation, okay? So we'll start with negative three. So we have one times two to the power of negative three. And I'm just gonna ignore the zero, okay? Because it doesn't, it just uses up space on the screen. So we'll skip this zero here and we'll skip to this one. So this is one times two to the power of negative one because negative two, two to the power of negative two has, we have zero of those. And then we have one times two to the power of zero. And then we have one times two to the power of two because one times a two to the power of one, we got zero of those. And then finally, we have one times two to the power of four. Okay, not finally because we got one more. And then we got, okay, zero. No, I think that's it. Okay, zero, two, four. Okay, so let me get rid of that plus. Okay, I'm, I'm still learning how to use this tablet. There we go, nice. All right, so now we can do all the addition, but if you want to spell out you know, these you know, individual um, components in the sum, we can do that. This is 0.125 plus this is 0.5. This is a one, that's a four, and that is a 16, okay? And when we add up everything, it is 20 times, a uh, 20 point, uh, 625. There we go. In base 10. Is that okay? Or did I, huh? 21. Yep, you're right. <laughs> I cannot do arithmetic. Oops, okay, that doesn't work. Nope, okay. Okay, let's redo the whole thing. 21.625, there we go. Thank you. All right, so are we doing okay in terms of knowing how to apply that sigma notation thing that we saw earlier? Okay, so now we're gonna go the opposite way. In other words, I give you a value, most likely in base 10, and I want to find out what is the representation of that value in a whatever base I choose to use. So that's the exact opposite of what we're doing here. I'm going to start a new slide for that. And we are going to start with, um, let's try, you know, oops. Let's try, okay, come on. There we go. 
All right, so let's start with um, 46, okay? Just 46, okay, with no decimal numbers. So 46, and we want to convert it to base 3, okay? So to base 3. So this time we're going to use a much more systematic way to do this compared to last time. Because last time what we did was we spell out the powers of whatever base we are choosing to use. In this case, you know, since we're using base 3, then we will be spelling out the powers like 1, 3, 9, 27, and so on. But that way is not really the best way of doing things. So this time I'm going to use a division method to do this. Okay, So we're going to do a division. We keep track of both the quotient and the remainder with each step of the division. And in the end, we're going to end up with a base 3 number. So we'll divide 46 by 3. 46 divided by 3 is 15 with a remainder of 1. 15 divided by 3 is a 5 with a remainder of 0. 5 divided by 3 is a 1 with a remainder of 2. So since we're ending with a number that is less than the base, which is the 1, we can now stop. The question is, what is the base 3 number? How do we read this? Are we reading this as a number as 1, 2, 0, 1 in base 3? Or are we reading this as 1, 0, 2, 1 in base 3? We know it's one, of the, one or the other, right? Because you know, it doesn't make sense to be reading these digits in a much more random way. So the correct order is the most significant digit is this one here. This is what we call the most significant digit, MSD. Um, so now the, we know the number is 1, 2, 0, 1 in base 3. And this is 46. Yep. No, because 16 times 3 is 48. 48 is greater than 46 already. Oh, you can always go down to zero, okay? You can keep going down to zero and then more zeros, but it doesn't, you, you won't be adding significant digits anymore because at that point, you'll just be padding zeros to the left of the significant digits. Yes, you, you can do that, as I said, you know, but you're not going to add anything useful to the digit. Because 1 divided by 3 is a 0 with a remainder of 1. And you ask, can we divide that 0 by 3? The answer is yes, sure, why not? Can we divide that 0 by 3 again? Sure. But we are not adding any significant digits to the whole thing. So we can stop with, in this case, we can stop with the 1. Because 1 is less than 3 already. You know, doing any further division is not going to give me anything that is non-zero. Uh, okay, you okay, you go ahead first, and then the the person in the back. Go ahead. We have one, two, zero, one. There are four digits. Well, okay, that's a very good question. Okay, I like questions. So we are going to have to check my results, OK? And go ahead, the other person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What is the same thing again? OK, all right. All right, so now the question is, when tech makes a claim, in this case, my claim is 46 in base 10 is the same as 1, 2, 0, 1 in base 3. What are you going to do? You ask me to prove it, OK? You want to ver your verification okay, of how this works, OK? And this year is an election year. It's a very important election year. I hope you you'll extend this attitude when you're reading your ballot. <laughs> All right. So what is this one telling me? One of what? 3 to the power of 
Zero. Very good. Okay. So this is basically telling me that, oh, by the way, we have one of three to the power of zero, which means, oh, it's just one. Okay, cool. Not a problem. What about this zero? It's telling me we have none of, exactly. Okay. We have none of three to the power of one. That's even easier. Okay. Zero times whatever is a zero. This two, two of three to the power of Two, okay, that's a 18. And what about this one? One of three to the power of three, which is a 27. So now you add 27, 18, and one. What do you end up with? 46. Wow. Isn't that magical? It's not magical. This is how we do base conversion by hand. Yes? It's, uh, it's, a, it's basically a cascading division thing. I can point here. So 46 divided by 3 is 15 with a remainder of 1. 15 divided by 3 is 5 with a remainder of zero. Um, and then five divided by three is one with a remainder of two. But since one is less than three already, I don't need any further division because if I do any further division, which is shown over here, I just end up with you know, further digits to the left of the entire thing of zeros. Is that okay? All right, cool. So this is a really cool method. The problem is it only works on um, whole numbers. It does not work on numbers that has a fractional part to it. So now the question is, how do we figure out the other things you know, where we have a fractional part? <clears throat> so there's a single equation that you can use in order to figure out a specific digit. It doesn't give you the entire number unless you apply that rep repetitively. But each time you apply this, it will give you a single digit. And it's not responding to my gesture anymore. I don't know why. Yeah. I think gesture is still enabled. Okay. All right. All right. So what we're going to do is to look at another method. So this method says, you know, digit i, okay, i is whatever position you want to use, is going to be the floor of whatever value you're converting from divided by the base raised to the power of i. This is called the floor symbol. I'll talk about that in just a, sec a few seconds. Mod b. Okay. So now, obviously, the first thing is, what is that square bracket thing missing the top? It's called the floor of something. So we'll go ahead and define the floor of something. The floor of x is the largest integer that is, let me remember, try to remember this, that is greater than or equal to X. Okay. So let's go through some examples of floors. Okay. So I'll see. Uh, nope. I got it wrong. Sorry. <laughs> let me let me fix this. Not greater, but less than. There we go. Okay. Now it makes sense. Because the largest integer that is greater than or equal to something is infinity. You can keep going. That doesn't make sense. So it has to be less than or equal to. All right, so we're going to go through a few examples so that we can kind of get some practice on floor. What is the floor of 2.5? What is the largest integer that is less than or equal to 2.5? It's just 2. Okay, very good. What is the floor of 2? 2. What is the floor of negative 2.5? the largest integer that is less than or equal to negative 2.5.
Negative 3. Okay, very good. Okay, now we're getting it. The last one is not really relevant because we don't usually deal with negative numbers in this context, but I just want to make sure that you guys do understand what it means when, it be, when we're defining the floor function. All right. So now the question is, how does this work? So we're going to use the same number, okay, like last time, which is what, 46, okay? So we want to convert V is 46, and we want to convert to base 3. Convert to base 3, okay? And this time I'm going to, I, I would do something kind of funky, which is I'm not going to use a order, okay? I'm not going to use a normal order. I'm going to say, let's try to figure out D1 first. Go like, but shouldn't we work with D0? Nope. Shouldn't we work with D of 2 or D of 3? Nope. I just randomly pick 1, okay? Because in this equation, it doesn't care, okay? As long as we know which digit we are working with, it will still give us the answer. Okay, so I'll let you guys do it. How about this, okay? You guys should all having, be having a piece of paper. If you're not having a piece of paper in front of you and a pen to take notes, I'm worrying for you. Yes? Yeah? Yes. It's still truncating down. <laughs> Yes, the magnitude goes up, yes, when it's negative. All right, so what is D of 1? Well, V is the same, 46, and we want to divide it by um, B, which is 3, to the power of 1. So 46 divided by 3 is, what, 15.333333, blah, 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 like that, right? And the question now is, what is the floor of 15.33333? 15, and then what is 15 mod 3? Zero. zero, very good. You know, the remainder of 15 divided by, 15 divided by 3 is a zero. Okay, and I'm going to skip around a little bit. Let's work with D3. What is D3 in this case? Okay, we start with 46, okay? And then we divide it by three, because base is three in this case. Three raised to the power of whatever the digit is, which is also three. What is three to the power of three? 27, very good. 46 divided by 27 is, I'm just gonna say one point something, okay? Okay, what is the floor of one point something? One. What is 1 mod 3? No. 3. No. What is 1 mod 3? 1. Very good. 1 divided by 3 has a remainder of 1. Okay. And we'll skip around again. Okay. D of 0 this time. So with D of 0, we have 46 divided by 3 to the power of Zero. Three to the power of zero is? <laughs> Who said three? <laughs> three to the power of zero. Anything to the power of zero is? One. Very good. Okay. So 46 divided by one is? 46. 46 mod three is? One. Very good. And? What about D2? Okay, that's the one that is missing so far. What is D of 2? D of 2 is 46 divided by 3 to the power of? Hmm? 3 to the power of 2. Because you know, we, are work, we are trying to work out digit 2, that digit 2. The 2 goes to the I. We substitute all the places of I with 2. B is 3. That's the base we're converting to. 3 to the power of 2 is 9. What is 46 divided by 9? I only care about the quotient. 5 with a, re with a remainder of something. Okay? So 5 point something, what is the floor of 5 point something? 
5. What is 5 mod 2? Excuse me, 5 mod 3. 5 mod 3 is? You guys all have to go back to remedial math, particularly arithmetic. Two, very good. Okay, five divided by three has a quotient of one and a remainder of two. Yes? No. Nope. This works regardless of the base. Yeah, but in whatever order I want to. Because you, know, you just have to say, which digit am I interested in? and then just work out that one single digit. Is that okay? But there's one really cool thing about this method. I can work out the digits on the negative side as well. Okay? <clears throat> you guys are going like, I don't think so. Yeah, yeah, it does work. So let's try your know, 3.141, what is pi again? 141? Okay, we'll just say 1415, okay? This is our value V, which is in base 10. So typically in this class, V is expressed in base 10 because we, we know base 10, okay? We know how to deal with base 10, so that's usually the case. And I want to figure out, okay, to base three, I want to figure out what is D of negative, I don't know, three. Okay. So how do we work this out? Oop. Screensaver. Um, 1.15. Okay, let me look it up on this side because I might need some additional digits to, for this to make sense. So, pi value. Uh, 3.15, Okay, 926. There we go. How do we figure out D of negative 3? So this time I'm testing to see whether you wrote down the definition that we just defined. Because if you did not, and you did not read ahead of cl the class, you look at this and go like, I have no idea how to do this. But on the other hand, if you wrote down the definition, the equation that we talked about, you just have to read your own notes and go like, yep, I know exactly what it is. Now, I know what it is because I wrote that stuff. So I'm a little bit, I'm the exception to the case in this class. I don't have to take notes in this class. All right, so how do we work this out? So we got 3.1415926, okay, this time I might actually need a calculator to help me. So I'm gonna switch to, um, I, I, I know exactly how to do this. I'll go to drive, go to my, CISP 310 folder, okay? And I'll go to the share folder too. So this way, whatever I do, you can see it as well after class. Okay, so I'm gonna start a new spreadsheet. Okay, there we go. And I'll name it after today's date. So it's easy to find. 2024, uh, January 23rd, okay? So yes, in terms of date format, I do like to use the European format because it makes sense. Because if you if you just sort your files, if your files are num or uh, if your files are using the European format and you sort it, it's automatically sorted correctly. Because the year is the most significant portion, it makes sense for the year to be all the way to the left hand side. The American way, which is using the month and then the day, and then the, and then the year, it makes sense in, from the perspective of if we know which year we are working with, we don't have to read the entire thing, but when you work on files that can cross, that can span over multiple years, that format does not make sense, at least not to me. Okay, so this is how I you know, name files in this class. Okay, so I'm gonna work on this equation here. Uh, we have you know, V, okay, this is V which is 3.1415926, okay? <clears throat> we have B being three, and we have I, which is the digit that I want to find out being negative three. So now I want to find out what is D of I. So this is D of I. 
So I can use the bracket notation to kind of emphasize that we are looking for d of i. So now I just have to enter that equation, which is the floor. Okay, so I have to use mod first because that's the outermost um, operation. And then inside the mod, we first have the floor, which is the value, okay, which is this thing here, divided by um, the base raised to the power of whatever the position of the digit is. And we perform that calculation, and then we take the floor of that, and then we mod the entire thing by what? The base itself, which is also just this guy here. All right. So I have just entered the entire thing using a, an Excel, not Excel, this is Google Sheets, but Excel would be about the same. It's a formula in a spreadsheet. Um, you cannot use a spreadsheet in your exam, okay? But if you're trying to understand a concept, a spreadsheet is really nice, okay? Because you, know, you can replicate the equation, which we'll also, you know, deal with you know, later. You can also plug in different values. You can save it, you can print it out. There are a lot of things you can do with a spreadsheet. Just look at a spreadsheet like a fancy calculator. That's basically what it is. Okay, so if you have not been using a spreadsheet to do you know, calculations and whatnot, you know, look into it. It's, it's a really, really useful tool. Yeah. Um, you can use up to a graphing calculator, which, is, which I think is pretty, it's much higher end than you would actually need. I would go to the Dollar Tree and buy a $1 calculator and I think that should be sufficient for the most part. I mean, with all the calculations that we did today, I mean, this is the only one that is a little bit more difficult, but even this one can be done using a $1 calculator from the Dollar Tree. So, yes, you can use calculators in a test, but the calculator, for the most part, is not going to be super helpful. It's just doing the arithmetic stuff, you know, that. Is, that is going to be useful for it. Enter, okay, it's a three, it's a zero. Okay, so if you say, but what about the other digits? What about um, digit negative two? It's a one, negative four, it's a two, negative one, it's a zero, and so on. So you can actually use this to figure out what pi is supposed to look like in base three. Now, we can only figure out one digit at a time, okay, in this particular scenario. Are we still doing okay so far with this demonstration? So we have, we, I have introduced two equations. One, to figure out the value of a particular number specified in the base, in a certain base. The other one does the opposite. Tell me what base we want to convert to tell me which digit we want to find out, tell me what is the value that we are converting from, and it will do the conversion to a particular digit in a specific base at a certain position. Do we have any questions? The answer is yes, okay? As long as you can perform the division in whatever base you know, that is, it's okay. I can do division in base two. It's just not gonna be easy. So that's why you know, V is typically expressed in base 10 because we know how to work with base 10 in divisions and whatnot. And most calculators are in base 10 too. But, the, but there's no restriction of you know, what V has to be expressed as because V is just a value. Okay, it is not, there's no intrinsic base to V. V is a quantity. However you want to specify that quantity in whatever base is fine, as long as you can perform division, floor, and mod. Correct. So if you have to convert between you know, two numbers, and they're both non-base 10, then you probably want to go through base 10 first as the intermediate you know, base, because we are not 
um, we are not trained to do division and multiplication in bases other than base 10. All right. Are there any questions? Yep. You mean in what context? Okay, so let's, okay, let me, so you're looking at this equation? Yeah. Okay. And your question is? So the mod is taking this and divided by this and is using, it's telling me what the remainder is. You, div you, you perform a division, but you only get the remainder after the division, yes. Oh, I see. That's basically what mod does anyway. Your mod looks like a percent symbol in C and C++. Right, right. so the, the first division, which is the slash, is the normal division. It is a double division, so it does give you the actual result of the division. But the second division is implicit because it is because of the mod. So the mod does a division, but it doesn't keep the quotient. It only gives you the remainder after the division. <clears throat> I know this looks a little bit awkward you know, because we know mod as the percent operator in C and C++. This is just a different notation, but it does the same thing as a mod. It's a percent, basically. All right, so that's a good question about the notation. Basically, it's a question about notation. Any other questions? Yep. The what? The first equation? The first formula? The sigma notation? Um, okay, so let's go back to that slide and see what we can get out of it. You mean this one? And the question was? All right. Okay, so the first thing we need, we need to do is to differentiate the concept between a number versus a value. So what is your recollection of that discussion? Yes. So I'm trying to get back to page one. There we go, finally. Okay, so this is what we first started off with. In, and this particular format, we are fixing to be using base 10. And this is, this is the sigma notation that would give us the value represented by the base 10 number. So as yes, you, can, you, can you can see that you know, the same number in different bases would give us different values. I mean, there are certain numbers that will always give us the same value, but in general, the same number in different bases would give us different values because we are raising the, we are raising a different base to the power. That's why, you know, if I just give you 100 zero as a number, in base 10, it means 100. In base 2, it means 4. In base 3, it means 9. In base 7, it means 49. So that's why we have to go through, that's why we have to talk about the next slide, or... Mm, this thing is kind of glitchy. Come on. Oof. There we go. Okay. So that's why we have to go through, not this one. Oh, come on. Not this one. Okay. Let me go back to my notes. It is in the notes itself. So that is why we have to talk about this. 
because this is the most general version of how do we find out the value represented by a number. D of i, each one is representing a digit in the number. B is the base that we are using for that number. And this entire thing, the sigma notation, would give us the value represented by that number. Is that making any sense? I'll give you another example. Okay, this, this one, you know, is going to be useful. Okay, come on. This tablet is a little bit glitchy. I just applied a new firmware today. So it looks like more firmware is coming. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and take a look at this one. I think there's, there's a confusion about value versus number. Okay. And I'm looking for that. There we go. Okay. All right. So let's think about a particular value. Um, like a monetary value, okay? So we are looking at, um, I'm just trying to think of a reasonable number here. Let's think of $7.78, okay. Okay, first of all, do we know what is the value? Do we know what $7.78 mean to you? Can I buy a Starbucks? Can I buy a book? Can I buy like seven calculators from the Dollar Tree, including taxes? Okay, and so on. Okay, it's a worth. Okay, you, know, you, got, you guys know what $7.78 is. Okay, so here comes, so that's the value. What is a number? Okay, the number in this case is, oh, I can look at this as 778 pennies. That's a number. Because that's one way to give you the same worth, which is $7.78, okay? I can look at this as, oh, seven $1 bills. Um, I'll make it awkward, okay? You know, two quarters. Yes, I'm not being optimal here, but that's, but that's the whole point, is you know, I have many, many ways of expressing the same value. Okay, so I would need uh, 28 pennies in this case. 28 pennies. Right? That would give you the same value, $7.78. So these are numbers, okay? Different ways of expressing the same value. Is that okay? Does that, does that help to clarify the difference between a value? Okay, this is value. This is a number. This is another number. Is that okay? Yes, no. Are we good? Okay. Any further questions about base conversion? Because I am done with base conversion. Let's take roll, okay, so that your brain has a little bit of time to do some uh, slow cooking. <clears throat> so let me, I have to change the due date because I think I forgot to take roll when it's time to do it. So today is 23, but the time is has passed already, so I have to change the, uh, the due date. Give me a second here. But you can sign into Canvas first, because you know, that you have to do anyway. So we will make it due at 6.40. Okay, that should be plenty of time. All right, so refresh, and you should be able to see the role taking activity for today. And the passcode is octopus, because we talked about octopus last time. Yeah. Uh, the, the 
inmates get transferred from whatever base for him to base 10? No, it doesn't really quote unquote convert to base 10. It tells you what is the value of the number. Now, normally, because we are used to base 10, so that's why normally the value is going to be in base 10. But it doesn't have to be in base 10. <clears throat> yes? You're converting bases all the time. You just did not know it in your other classes. Not so much the compiler. It is one of the libraries that you link with that's doing all the conversion. When you use C in and you're reading an integer from the keyboard, it's already doing the conversion. What do you think numbers are, how do you think numbers are represented internal to a modern computer? Which base are we going to use? Base two, okay, very good, okay? So everything inside the computer is already expressed in base two. When you say C in um, greater than, greater than X, okay, and X is an integer, and you type 69 on the keyboard and then press the enter key, the 69 is converted into the internal base two representation. You just don't know about it. But when it's stored internally, it is already in base two. Okay, so that. Um, so in this class, you know, we care about base conversion because you know, the next topic. Okay, can anyone guess what the next topic is? Yes. That's what we're gonna do today. But what about Thursday? What do you think we're gonna talk about on? Well, that's a little bit ahead of the topic. Yes? No? Division implies we have to do uh, subtraction already and also multiplication. You cannot do division except for base two without knowing multiplication first, but in base two, it's easy. No, okay, this is shocking to me. <clears throat> the way you can know, you know what we're gonna talk about in the near future is to go to Canvas, and then what you do is you just look up the current topic and you scroll down. I'm pretty sure you guys know how to do that. So what we are dealing with today is values, numbers, and bases. So what is the next link? What is binary number addition, okay? This is the next topic. Okay, we might actually have time to get into it today unless we have too many questions about base conversion. So we care about the base conversion because that's what we're gonna talk about is how do we add numbers in base two? But how can we verify addition in base two if we don't know how to convert between the bases? So that's why you know, base conversion is important. Base conversion also tells you how to read a number. We got a bunch of digits, okay? In base 10, we have digits from zero to nine and we got a bunch of those. In base two, we got a bunch of zeros and ones. What does each digit mean? Because until we know what each digit mean, we cannot explain addition. Now you guys may think, but I know addition. You know, that's simple stuff. You know, I've been doing it for decades, okay? Well, okay, in my case, in decades. In your case, at least one decade, right? So the question is, how do we perform addition? What are the concepts of carrying in addition? Well, does it only work, does it only work in base 10? Or does it also work in other bases? So that's what we're gonna talk about in your know, binary number addition. Today, what we are talking about I said base conversion, but what it really boils down to is how values are represented in different bases. Give me a value, tell me what base I'm supposed to convert it into or represent it in, and I know how to do it. Give me a number in whatever base, I can figure out what value that number is representing. Those are the two things, the core of today's lecture are those 
two things. And we start off with you know, a particular base that we are familiar with, which is base 10. Yes? Um, yes, we are understanding what is, un it extends all the way, you know, this particular uh, module, it starts with things that we know, which is base 10 addition. And then it generalizes and go like, okay, what is the mechanism of performing multi-digit base 10 addition? Oh, we need a concept of carrying, okay? And how do we relate a digit to the, to the relevant digits in a multi-digit base 10 edition. Then we extract the structure of that thing. We give each digit a name. We relate the digits using functions. And then we say, what if we don't like base 10 anymore? What if we want to deal with base two? What is going to change? Oh, it's just that one little thing over there that is a 10, change that to a two. The same rules, the same structure will apply again even though, we are, when, even though we are going to perform base two operations. That's what that module is going to talk about. All right, yes. Go ahead. You mean the concept of carrying? Yeah. When we have a carry of one, that is correct. So if I read your question correctly, you're asking, so the only difference between addition in different bases is when do we have a carry of one? Yeah. Yes, that is correct. So other, yeah, go ahead. Oh, hmm? Say that one more time, sorry. Oh, no, 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 I'm done with that thought. It, it would, it's, not, it's no different than trying to represent one divided by three in base 10. You just have recurring digits. That's all it is. You just have recurring digits. All right, well, let's think about that. Okay, point nine. What does point nine look like? Okay, choose your base. Hmm? Well, point nine in base 10 is just point nine. In binary, okay, let's, let's do point nine in base two, and we're gonna use a spreadsheet to do it, okay? So I'm gonna reuse the spreadsheet that we already had, which is over here, okay? And I'm gonna start a new sheet, okay? There we go. So this time, I'm gonna arrange things in rows, okay? Um, so we have you know, V equals to, okay, this is value, which is point nine, that's in, that's in base 10. And this is, the base is two, okay, because we want to convert it to base two, right? And we'll start with digit I being zero, okay? So we'll deal with zero, and then we'll deal with digit negative one, and I'm getting tired of you know, doing the subtraction myself, so I'm just gonna say this is whatever is before me minus one. And then we can go like, woo, let's do a bunch, like that. Is that okay? This is why I like spreadsheets because it can actually show you what loops are supposed to do, you know, but spell it out, you know, lay it all out. Okay, so that's I, and we're gonna make this one, you know, D of I, okay? So we're gonna do the same thing as last time, except this time I have to be careful when I write the formula. Uh, we still have a mod on the outside, a floor in the inside, and we still have V over here. So V is still, you know, referring to B1 as a cell, but this time I'm gonna to have to use absolute reference because you know, otherwise um, when I try to use the same thing on different cells, it's not gonna work. So the dollar sign you know, is needed in order to say for all the other formula that I'm gonna copy into, keep referring to row one, okay? Don't make it float with uh, the cell that I'm copying the, the formula into. Um, the same reason I'm using power here but the base is also going to be fixed, um, and that's gonna be B2, 
So it's going to be B dollar two, because I don't want that row number to change as I copy the formula to the other cells. But the power that it's raising to, which is also the position of the digit, is really just this particular cell. And this one does need to change your per row. So that's why B3 is just B3 and not B$3. And that concludes this part. And then what we are modding with is um, the base, which is also B$2. So this has to be B$2 because I, won't, I don't want that to change as I make copies of the formula to the other cells. So that's one, okay? And now I can just go like this. Woohoo, look at that. All right, that doesn't seem right. I'm forgetting something. What am I forgetting? What am I forgetting? Mm, division, very good. It's supposed to be a division, not a comma. That makes sense. Oh, okay. Make one change and then copy that. All right. Are we seeing a repeating pattern? So this is digit zero. The decimal point goes here. The decimal point is between these two. So we are looking at 0 0.1110011001. What do you think the next one is going to be? It's going to be another one, right? Okay, if you're not convinced, we can do this, right? We can do this all day long. Okay. One, one, zero, zero. And we can keep going. So, is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> that is correct. That is an, yep, that is an excellent question. Okay, the, the, the question, if I were to generalize, generalize the question, is how do we represent real numbers? Because, you know, this is a real number. Um, pi is actually a real number. It, you know, okay, what is, the, what is the difference between pi, the quantity pi, and one-third? They're called different names. So negative two is an integer. Right, five is a natural number, one third is a is a rational number, and pi is irrational. Very good. Okay, so now we have you know all those you know, general terms of describing numbers. So a real number include irrational number, and also rational numbers, but we cannot represent those things exactly. Sometimes, most of the time. So the way we do those things, the way we represent real value is in the future module. So if you scroll all the way down, all the way to uh, floating point number representation, that will talk about how real numbers, quote unquote real numbers, are represented. So we are going to get to it eventually, but we cannot talk about that until we feel comfortable with binary numbers. And that's what today's class really is about, is you know, how do we represent a quantity in different bases, a value in different bases. And how do we read a number? Is that okay so far? All right. We still got eight minutes, okay? So I think we can get started with number, with addition, okay? But we are not gonna start with binary addition. We'll start with base 10 multi-digit addition, okay? So that's what we're gonna do. Unless there are questions you know, about the topics that we were talking about today. So I'm always ready to answer those questions. But if there are no questions about the things that we talked about today, I'm going to move forward and talk about multi-digit base 10 edition. Are we good so far? All right. Okay. So the first question is, what is that? In base 10, okay, remember all of this discussion is in base 10. What is four plus eight? You go like 12, okay, that's easy. But what about this? If I have 204 plus you know, 98, okay, 
what about this 4 plus 8? Okay, because you know, we still have 4 plus 8 here, but you're not going to call me, you, you're not, you're, you're not going to say it is 12. What are you going to say this time when I ask you, uh, what is 4 plus 8? 2 with a carry of 1. Okay. 2 with a carry of 1. Okay, cool. Not a problem. What about the next column? 0 plus 9 is a 9. The 9 plus the carry coming from column 0. Hmm? 0 carry 1. Okay, with a 0 and a carry of 1. 2 plus 1 is just a 3. Okay. I just pull these numbers, you know, randomly, okay? But are, are we understanding this particular multi-digit base 10 edition? Everybody feel comfortable? No one feels the need to, to go back to uh, remedial math in arithmetic? No? Okay, very good. So the big question is, what is carry? What is the concept of carry doing? In base 10, why does this end up with a carry? What about this one? Okay, 23 plus, I don't know, 41. That's a 4, that's a 6. No carry of 1. So what is the purpose of carrying? Very good. Okay, so that's a very succinct and correct you know, definition of carry. We have a carry of one when the sum of a particular column exceeds the base. In this case, it's, um, I, I shouldn't say exceed, it's at least the base, which is 10 in this case. So that's why, you know, okay, should we another example? 25 plus 15, even this one has a carry of one because five plus five is 10. And as soon as we reach 10, we have a carry of one. Okay, and then 2 plus 1 is a 3, 3 plus 1 is a 4, so that's a 40. Okay, so the concept of carry is important because, you know, we need to figure out, you know, when do we have a carry and so on and so forth. But there are two sources of a carry. In this case, the 4 plus 8 ends up with a carry of 1, okay, that's one source of a carry. It's, it's coming from the two digits that I gave you to add, okay? But then in column 1, 0 plus 9 does not end up with a carry. The carry of 1 is only happening because I'm adding the 9, which is the sum of the digits that are given to you, and the carry that is coming from the column to its right-hand side. So there are two sources of a carry of 1. Is that okay? I'm just looking at the time. We still got three more minutes. I think we can get through at least some of the notation stuff here. Okay. So, if I have a general you know, um, addition, okay, I'm adding two digits to two digits in base 10, and I'm just, I'm just gonna call those digits W, X, Y, Z, and the sum, uh, and we have to find two more symbols, um, U and V, okay, U and V, and potentially another one over here, this is T, okay? This is in base 10. In base 10, okay? So each one of these symbols of these letters, W, X, Y, Z, T, U, V, each one is only a digit from zero to nine, okay? So now the question is, how do we figure out V? What do you think V is? Okay, we know it has to do with this, right? It has to do with the sum between X and Z, right? But then you guys go like, yeah, but what about, you know, X plus Z is greater than 10, then we only want to keep the portion that is exceeding 10, and then the 10 itself becomes the carry to the next digit. I can fix that. Yes? Cool, okay. So we're gonna, what about U, the digit U, okay? All right, so we have the same thing. K, 
okay? We will start with that, okay? So this will give us, you know, whatever the sum, you know, between W and Y is. But then we also have to add the carry from the column to the right-hand side. So now you have to ask, ah, how do we express the carry from the column on the right-hand side, but in an equation way? Because I'm not even telling you what exactly is X or Z. I'm just giving you and go like, oh, yeah, they are base 10 digits, but I'm not telling you what they are. What do you think? W, W, okay, there are, there are several ways to express this, okay. But I'm gonna use the most concise way to do it. Oops, back, 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 back. Too much, greater than or equal to 10, question mark, one, colon, zero. All right, so I'm claiming that this portion here is representing the carry from um, the rightmost column. Does that make sense to you? Well, if you don't know what this is representing, it's not gonna make any sense whatsoever. So what is that? What is the question mark in the colon? It's kind of like a if statement. It's basically saying, if this, then this, else that. Okay? So basically, all it's trying to say is, give me a one if x plus z is at least 10. If not, give me a zero. Doesn't that capture the concept of a carry? I think so, okay. But the problem is, this portion, can be a nine, this portion can be a one, so that means this entire thing needs to be modded by 10. Is that okay? So I'm running out of time today, I will stop here. But this is what we are going to do on Thursday. In other words, we start with something that is concrete. Okay, come on. So we start with something that is concrete, and then we try to extract the structure out of something that is concrete so that we can have a general way of performing those calculations without knowing exactly what value we are working on. Yes? Um, well, well, Yes, so it's gonna change, you know, it's gonna look really ugly. So that's why, you know, on Thursday, we are, going, we are going to introduce a notation so that everything will look, will look very neat and clean. Okay, so my, um, I know we are going to the lab right now, but the reading assignment is on that particular module. Binary addition is the module that you should be reading. It's a really long module, okay? So at least read up to the, uh, the transition to base two, you know, at least finish the reading on base 10 multi-digit addition, because you know, that's what we're gonna be talking about. It's going to be abstract, okay? It is going to be abstract. That's the whole, what this class is about is abstraction, okay? We, do, we start with concrete stuff, and then we just you know, gradually move into the abstraction you know, direction. All right, so, Today's lab is, is base conversion, which is this one here. And I am going to give you the access code. This is the access code to, to the, today's lab. It is heptapod, H-E-P-T-A-P-O-D, heptapod, which is how we call the creatures in the movie Arrival for seven limbs, okay? Um, I will change the due date, so it's going to be due tonight at 7, excuse me, at 8.20 p.m. So by the time you get to the lab, you can start on it, okay? Um, I'm going to finish up with the recording stuff and, uh, you know, just cleaning up my mess here. I'll see you guys over at the lab. <clears throat> Thank you.
Give me a second here. Yes. Um, on, the, on the last like slide we're working on, you were using that formula. Mm -hmm. um, you mean the spreadsheet? Uh, it was not on the spreadsheet. It was on. Uh, oh, you mean on the uh, slide? Yeah. On the okay. Give me a second. I was just curious because why couldn't we? There was one part of it that was like we needed to mod it at the end again. Mm -hmm. That's where you kind of did it. I yes. Was, I wanted to ask, uh, why oh, can you we just add that to the... Yes, uh, you can You can add everything, then mod. Like, like yeah. W plus slide plus that entire, like... Yeah, so this mod 10 is not needed. Yeah. Yep, that is correct. Okay, yeah, that yep. was exactly my question. Yeah, but typically when people do it by hand, you know, they Did implicitly... You know, yeah, because that mod 10 is coming from the previous column. It's like, I'm just trying to copy what I did in you the previous column. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the notation that we'll be talking about that we'll be introducing on Thursday is going to bypass you know, a lot of this stuff already. But I'm in this particular demonstration, I'm just you know, demonstrating is like, okay, now that we know how to work with concrete values, can we work with, can we figure out the actual general relationship between the digits? So that's basically the demonstration of this whole thing. But on Thursday, we have a much more formal way to do this, and it's going to look nice, neat, and clean. Okay. Yep. Okay. Oh, okay. Thank you. Do you have a question? Let me uh, turn off the recorder.